Hello friends, Mandar here. I'm back with another video. Today I'm going to talk about my experience and my thoughts on people who are on H1B, especially from India, and are waiting for a very long time to get their green cards. So I'm going to share some of my thoughts on this situation that Indian people are facing in the United States while being on H1B. I'm also going to talk about the option that H1B people typically from India choose while they are waiting for their green card, which is Canadian immigration. I have some thoughts on this and I hope you'll agree and like this video. So if you're interested in this topic, please stay until the end and let's get started. Now here is the situation. India is a technological hub. There are a lot of good colleges and universities in India that churn out a lot of engineers every year. And these are very high skilled engineers who have gone through the rigorous process of engineering in India. And someone who has done engineering in India can relate to what I'm saying. Now, most of them have aspirations to go to the United States to make a living, but also to make a mark in the industry. A Lot of the Indian engineering students, a lot of STEM students, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics students from India make it big over here. Many of them work for consultancies, some of them work for big tech industries, while others prefer to make their own startups and are successful at it. But during this entire process, there is something called H1B. Now H1B is dual intent visa. What it means is it allows the holder of this visa to work in the United States for an employer for a temporary period of time, which is typically maximum of six years, including the extensions. Now, during this process, the dual intent visa allows them to apply for their green card, which is the permanent residency application. This green card application is typically a very long process, especially for, there are several different steps that are involved. And I have made several videos on employment-based green card application and their steps. So it's a complicated process. Another thing is there is an annual quota for employment-based green cards. If you look at the overall numbers, America is famous for giving out green cards on a family basis. So basically, if you are married to a US citizen, you are first in the line to get a green card. It's always available. Secondly, if you are an immediate relative of citizen or a green card holder, then the family members also get a green card. And then comes employment-based. Employment-based green cards constitute only 12% of the total number of green cards given in the United States. So you can imagine the employment-based category is very, very competitive, especially since there is a quota. Also within that quota is a per country cap, which is 7%. So the country the size of India, which has 1.3 billion population, they still have a quota of only 7%. Now there is a provision if the visa numbers from the other categories of visas are not filled then those roll over to these country caps and India typically gets about 16, 17 or 18 percent anywhere in, in that range. Now some would argue that the proportion of green cards received by Indians is the same as the proportion of their entire population compared to the world population. So what am I talking about? India has 1.3 billion population, so it constitutes around 18% of the total world population. And if you look at the number of employment-based visas, they are also the same. This is a very good argument, but there is a problem. Of all the non-immigrant employment-based visas such as H-1B visa, about 70% of them are claimed by Indians. If you look at it, the pipeline of the green card is disproportionate. So you have more number of people becoming eligible for a green card application based on H-1B coming into the system than the number of visas available for the green card. And due to this, there is a huge backlog for Indian citizens getting a green card. It is said that this backlog is anywhere between 10 years to 150 years, which is impossible backlog, to be honest. And I can understand the frustration that Indians go through while waiting for their green card. Here are some of the problems that they face. You are tied to your current employer who sponsored your H-1B and who also sponsored your green card application at least until your I-140, which is the second stage in the green card is approved. You are at the mercy of your H-1B employer to be able to maintain your status in the United States. You or your company spends thousands of dollars in H-1B extensions, amendments, or transfers. You cannot do long-term financial planning as buying a house, and you may be putting a lot of your important decisions on hold. This is not a very good situation. And under this situation, Canadian permanent residence is really a viable option for a lot of Indian people who are working 
in United States on H1B and waiting for their green card. I have made several videos on Canadian immigration and you can check them out in my channel. It used to be that Canadian permanent residence was an easier option back in the days, at least about 5 to 10 years back. But recently things have changed. Now they have a merit-based immigration system, which is a point-based system, which gives weightage to your education, your experience, your age, your language skills, and many other things. Now here is another twist. Some of them actually work on their Canadian immigration at very early stage when they come into the United States. And that gives them a pathway to Canadian permanent residence and Canadian citizenship if they take that step. But not everybody does that. Some people think about this Canadian permanent residence option after a lot of years have passed by. By the time they think about this option, they are already 35 or 40 years of age. The problem with express entry for Canadian immigration is the age is a very important factor. So if you are between 22 to 29 years of age, you get a lot of points for age. But if you are but 30 years onwards, you start losing points. So by the time you hit the age of 40 or 45, you almost have no points to add to your express entry profile and your chances of Canadian immigration really go down. So that is one of the points that I suggest people think about. Another point I want to make is a lot of times I see H1B people thinking about Canadian permanent residency option as a backup option. I think that is not a really good thing. The reason is Canada is a great option even for long term. I don't recommend anybody to see Canada as a backup option for United States. When you plan about it, you should plan seriously and consider thinking Canada as your home. It is only fair because not only you are investing, Canadian government is also investing time and money in you because they provide a lot of social benefits for you and help you assimilate into Canadian culture. If you go to Canada thinking that you'll only be killing time until you get your green card, think about it again because you'll be killing your own precious time of your life. This is very important because by the time you go there, by the time you get your permanent residency and by the time you get your citizenship, it is considerable amount of time between 5 to 7 years. Now 5 to 7 years of your own life is not a small thing. What I mean to say is spend them wisely, enjoy the time in Canada, think about living there, Try to assimilate into their culture. See how it fits your need. See how you like it. Canada has a lot to offer. And while getting the permanent residency and citizenship, you'll appreciate the freedom that you have missed while living in the United States on H1B. So what I mean to say is, give due respect to your decision in moving to Canada and making it a your home. Don't go with the mindset that this is a backup option. Always think about it as you may like it. Now here are some other expectations that people on H1B have about Canada. They think that Canada is the same economy. They think that they will be easily able to get a job that is equivalent to their job in the United States. This is not always true. Canada is a different economy. It's one tenth the size of the United States. But even given that size of the economy, they have maintained a very high standard of living. So you need to consider this as an entire package. Yes, maybe your salary is lesser than what you would earn in the United States. Yes, maybe your job is not at the same level as you had in the US. But if you think about the freedom that you just acquired by getting your permanent residency compared to H1B, you'll appreciate it. I have gone through both the immigrations, US and Canada, and I am really humbled with the experience that I got from both. My point of this video is, whatever you do, give it 100%. If you decide to go to the camp, if you decide to go to Canada while waiting for your green card, give it your 100%. Go with open mindset. Don't think about it as a backup option. And then when the time comes, think about if you want to return to the United States or if you are happy living in Canada. I know a lot of people who have made this decision to go to Canada and are very happy with it. And that's all I wanted to say in this video. I hope you like this video and it gives you some perspective and some thought to consider. If you like this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel and I will see you in the next one.